our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen friends let us uh, in our heart and uh, through our mouth proclaim the word word of the lord in isaiah 11:2 the spirit of the lord is upon me the spirit of wisdom is upon me the spirit of understanding is upon me the spirit of counsel is upon me the spirit of knowledge is upon me the spirit of might is upon me the spirit of fear of the lord is upon me the spirit of excellence is upon me the spirit of patience is upon me the spirit of forgiveness is upon me god has filled us with the power of the holy spirit and we declare today right now that the spirit by the spirit who's living in us god will use each one of us for his glory and for his kingdom by bringing in hundreds of souls to to his uh, uh, to his uh, uh, fold we will be used and we are used we thank the lord the holy spirit because the holy spirit has uh, taken our body as his residence and we declare that the spirit of the lord is living in us and we will glorify through our lives uh, through our action through the words we will glorify the almighty god thank you lord holy spirit for moving in our hearts for staying in our heart for using us and for uh, for giving us everything that uh, you have uh, in to us thank you lord thank you master thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you lord thank you lord thank you for this bible study that you have organized for us lord lord it is not by our merit it is not by our effort but by the spirit of the lord who organizes everything who teaches everything what uh, jesus has told that the spirit will come and teach everything to to you whatever i have told you yes so thank you holy spirit for um, for revealing to us the mysteries of the kingdom thank you for bringing brother johnson and the jcilm team thank you for the children's bible study that you have organized everything you have organized lord we thank you and praise you especially on the day when you established the you instituted the holy eucharist and um, uh, and the priesthood we wanted to thank you lord for giving us um, your body and blood the lord for us to sustain every day and be empowered oh lord thank you master for your eucharist hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord hallelujah shia la 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 thank you lord thank you master hallelujah thank you thank you jesus hallelujah jesus thank you master hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord thank you jesus hallelujah amen amen brother 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 jos yes only remember when you make a prayer don't make it in future tense okay yeah 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 <laughs> yes Can you can you put the chat ready? Can I send you a chat, please? That is uh, on. Okay, one second. Let me. Yeah, you can send me the chat to everyone. You understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay then. One second. Because I won't be able to finish in ten me in half an hour, but at least the notes will be there. Yeah, you can now send. Thanks, brother. No, it's not going. You just uh, come out of it. My chat is too too long. My my chat is too long. Okay. Because even if I am not able to complete, oh. at least the notes will be there. Then there can be self study. Yeah. So what we are going to study today is you know, yeah. uh, there are three words. Yeah, got it. It's many. Gabata yeah. and Golgotha. Yeah. So today we are going to study about Gethsemane. Yeah. What exactly happened in Gethsemane? Yeah. And then tomorrow we will take another word called Gabata. I don't know the people have heard that word Gabata. And the third one is Golgotha. Yeah. So there were three trials in Jesus's life in this within twenty four hours, yeah. and uh, All the three trials are of three different issues. Yeah. Gethsemane is where Jesus is going through an attack yeah. with Satan. Yeah. Gabata is a place where Jesus is under the attack of the sinners, human people, sinners. Yeah. And Golgotha is the place where Jesus is under the attack of his own father. Yeah. 
because he, the death penalty is the curse penalty has to be paid. So what was paid, what was supposed to be paid on us by us, yeah. the father put that uh, that penalty on his son. Yeah. So the son suffers in three times, three different. First is Satan, yeah. then is humans, and then is the heavenly father. And that is the, the the journey that Jesus has to take before he gets into Easter Sunday. Okay. So in Gethsemane, Jesus suffers at the hand of Satan. Now, this uh, in Gethsemane, you find Jesus is surrounded by his own friends. There are no, no strangers there. Hmm. But there is a battle that is going on in his mind. And that battle is the battle of thoughts, hmm. the battle of temptations. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is going through a terrible battle where Satan is trying to put his best pressure on Jesus so that he doesn't go to the cross. As a human being, he is putting pressure that Jesus should not go to the cross. The pressure is so much that Jesus even confesses that he is uh, totally as good as dead. Okay, he tells his uh, disciples that his pressure is so much, yeah. he actually sweats blood. Yeah. His blood vessels starts bursting. Yeah. Now, over there, he is pleading to his father yeah. and saying, is there a way out that you can, uh, you know, this cup of suffering can go? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. So, what is that cup of suffering is not the death penalty, it is not the physical torture, it is not the mental torture, none of those things. What is the cup of suffering is that on the cross, when the father, when the father's turn would come, he would put the sin of the whole world into his son. And when he would receive the sin of the world, God who is holy, he cannot have any relationship with a person who is unholy. So for our sake, God made him to be sin who knew no sin. So God would take our sin, put it on his son and take his righteousness and give it to us. So when sin would come upon him, it would be unbearable first of all, because he's sinless and he would, he would be ready to swallow that but at the same time, his relationship with the father would be cut off. And that's why everywhere he is using the word father. But on the cross, he doesn't use the word father. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So was it uh, that moment uh, on the cross where he really received all the sins? He, he, was, he, he was separated from his father. Oh. The connection was cut off. That's why he's asking, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm. And if, if Jesus is not rejected by the Father, mm. then we cannot be accepted in the family of God. Yeah. Because of his obedience, he is accepted. Mm. But because of our disobedience, we are rejected and we are destined to go to hell. Mm. So what does, he, what does the Father do? That penalty he takes from us and puts it on his Son. Mm. And the Son is rejected for our sake. Mm. So that now we are accepted in the family and that's how we get adopted in the family of God. And that separation from the father is the most painful moment for Jesus because he has never been separated from his father for eternity. But love even goes to the extent that he's willing to be separated from his father so that he can win us and bring us out of the, uh, out of the pathway to hell to be adopted in the family and so become the children of God. And this is so important in the Garden of Gethsemane is that Satan nearly cornered him. Okay. And at that time, if Jesus has to even walk into fear or open his mouth and speak one negative word, you know, the battle was so sensitive, brother. Uh, Jesus is the son of God and he has lowered himself and come as son of man. Okay. And in this battle, Satan has to do only one thing. He has to put so much of pressure that Jesus should disobey only once. Just once. He has to disobey God. The moment Jesus disobeys God as man, he is God himself. 
So his own disobedience would help Satan to take over heaven. Please understand. Adam is on the top level. Satan in the Garden of Eden is on a lower level. Because as God has created man in his likeness and image. So we are higher than the angels. But, but when Adam refused to believe God and believe Satan and fell for his lies, he became a slave of Satan. Yeah. In the same way, the battle for Jesus is, if Jesus also fails as a man, yeah. forget about the human race, uh -huh. Satan becomes the God of heaven. Have you ever thought that? No. How will he become? Again, again, again. You, you have not put uh, attention. Okay. Yes. God gave Adam the dominion on earth, right? Yes. Satan comes and deceives Adam by telling a lie. Yes. Now, Adam makes a decision to disobey God and obey Satan. Yes. Because it is the, the application is very simple. Whoever you obey becomes your master. Yeah. So the moment Adam obeyed Satan, yeah. Satan became the master and took over the Garden of Eden and took over everything. Yeah. He took over the earth. Yeah. And he is still there as the God of this world. The God of this world is also called as God of this age. Mm -hmm. Means he is not a permanent God. Mm -hmm. He is a deceiving God who has taken it illegally. But he cannot be a permanent God. The God of heaven is permanent for all eternity. Mm. So this, this also will be restored back to God. Okay. Now coming back that just as Adam obeyed Satan and Satan became the master. In the same way, if Jesus has to disobey God even once, mm. even once, that very moment Satan becomes the God of Jesus, mm. master of Jesus. Mm. So, do you, do you understand what the battle is? Mm. One mistake of Jesus, the salvation plan is gone. Mm. Secondly, heaven is taken over by Satan because he himself broke the law. Mm. Can you understand the pressure of that battle? Yeah. And yet, for love's sake, Jesus comes to take on that battle. And that is what is happening in Gethsemane. I put all those scriptures there. Yeah. Because in Mark, in Mark 14, 33, he is, he is, he is so much of uh, under pressure that he, he needs support and he is asking his friends to be awake to support him in prayer and he finds them sleeping. So, what, so, sorry, what would have, uh, what was Jesus's expectation when he asked uh, the I asked Peter and John and James to pray? What would have, what what is that they he expected them to pray for? See, okay, let me put it this way: you take you take holiday from praying and studying the Bible for three days. What mm -hmm. happens to you? Three, three days you take off. Don't don't touch the Bible. Don't pray. What happens to you? Yeah, I will start uh, my system start. Yeah. Why? Because because just as my stomach needs food mm. to convert into calories, my spirit also needs food, the word of God, to convert into faith. Mm. So now Jesus, you see, just before this, did they have the Last Supper? Yeah. Why did Jesus give them the food, the body and blood? Because he was instituting the, you know, Eucharist for the whole world. It was not only instituting. He was giving his body and blood as a Passover lamb mm. in the old covenant. Mm. When they ate the, la the the body of the lamb. You remember that night? Yeah, yeah. They had to eat it with haste. Yeah. After eating that, they came out of Egypt. They came out of slavery. Okay? And they traveled for three days, three nights without without a stop. Hmm. That 
food that they ate of the lamb that was the Passover lamb, the Bible says not one of them was sick. Mm. Every one of them came healthy. Mm. So the power of, of the body mm. and blood of Christ is so strong that Satan cannot stand. See, uh, when God said to them to have the food in haste and leave that night, mm. it was actually they walking out of slavery mm. and going to the promised land flowing with milk and honey. Mm. So they were in a land called not enough. Mm. They were on a journey with God mm. where God would provide them enough mm. and God's intention was not for them to be in a land just enough. He wanted to take them to the land of milk and honey where there is much more than enough. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So to do that, he had to tell them to eat the Passover lamb. Mm. If the body of an animal could bring healing that night mm. and they could come out of Egypt and there was not one sick among them and they could make it to the promised land, they, they could go for three days, three nights mm. with one meal mm. of the flesh of their lamb. Mm. How much more do you think is the power in the Eucharist? If a person understands. No, that that that, uh, that I have understood. So my question is that when uh, Jesus uh, told uh, Peter and uh, yeah, other... so he is giving them the body and blood, ah. and, and before that, so that even after they run away in fear, ah. they will not run away in the in the wrong direction forever. Ah. They will take a U turn, and that same body and blood of Jesus will bring them back and restore them to their position. Hmm. That is why when you understand the Eucharist and you partake of the Eucharist, there's tremendous power because Jesus in you when, you, when you eat his body and drink his blood, the Bible says you overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So when you have actually eaten the body and blood of Jesus, you have now divine body, divine, divine life flowing into you. Yeah. And that is why it the, the body and blood of Jesus not only has control over your body, yeah. but it also affects your mind, your consciousness. And that is why uh, when a person is receiving, now for example, you got a big, big warfare going on. Yeah. After two days, yeah. you must go to the Eucharist and take at least one or two Eucharist, yeah. one in the morning, one in the evening, yeah. and strengthen yourself with the Eucharist. Mm. That helps you to overcome the thoughts in your conscious, subconscious mind. Mm. And that's where the battle is won or lost in the mind. Mm. A person is a good man and a person is a bad man, not in his body, mm. his mind, the mm. way he thinks. Mm. And praise God, the body of Christ the blood of Christ and the prayer that we have according mm. to the scriptures mm. they all are powerful vitamins of heaven mm. that has power to mm. get your mind and your thinking in the right direction mm. that is why there he is saying if you pray when Satan will give his best shot you will not be weak that you will fall apart you will be able to withstand mm. That's why he's asking us to pray. Prayer is not is 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 a is a process by which you are planting your seeds for the future. Uh, Prayer is a is a system by which you are asking God to yeah. intervene in your affairs. Uh, that is you giving license to God. To uh, uh, why is their prayer so important? Because God has given dominion on earth to mankind. Uh, cannot come just like that and do whatever he wants. He needs man's permission. He needs man's cooperation. He needs man's agreement. Yes. That is why to bring Jesus, he had to ask Mother Mary if she is willing to say yes. And thank God she said yes. 
Praise God. Praise God. So, during that battle of the cup of suffering, okay, the battle is on one side, Jesus going through the thoughts yeah. and he wants to turn his back. And on the other side, the father is saying, no, my son, you'll have to go through this. So when does obedience come? Obedience comes only when there is submission. Yeah. And that submission should be out of love. Yeah. So when submission comes, by default, it will end up with obedience. Yeah. But if the submission is not there, then there is no question of obedience. Yeah. It will turn into a, um, you know, disobedience. Yeah. So Satan, why, why is Satan so interested that Jesus should not get into the cross? He want to kill him somewhere else, but not on the cross. Yeah. Why? Why, brother? He, he didn't want to? Uh, what, what is it? What, can he, you want, he, he, he doesn't want Jesus to be crucified on the cross. Yeah. He, wants to kill him, he wants to kill him before Jesus can get to the cross. Why? Because a cross was a symbol representing the worst of the worst criminal. Not everybody was crucified. Oh. Only the worst of the worst criminal was crucified on the cross. Oh. But on the same cross, when the blood oh. was shed, oh. same cross oh. turned from a curse to a blessing. Oh. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. And and uh, do you think Jesus, uh, Satan tried to kill Jesus many a times? Yes. How do you know? Once uh, in his own village, uh, the villagers and uh, his relatives tried to push him. That is that is once. I'm uh -huh. talking about many times. Many times, uh, yeah. So that is one. Then the then Herod uh, tried to kill him, and he told him, go and tell the fox. Uh, the fox. I, I, I don't. In the, in the boat when they face the storm. Okay. If I show you a scripture, will you you'll get shocked then? Mm. Okay, I'll show you a scripture. That is why we we think that Jesus is the Son of God, which is true. But look at this. Read, brother. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. So was it only one or two times? Or was it day and night? When it was written day and night, brother. What do you read? Read it again. In the days of his flesh. Which means during his uh, life. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. So, Satan wanted to kill him every moment. Mm. And Jesus was all the time praying to God mm. to save him from death. Mm. And he was saved. That's what he says. He was heard. Mm. And how was Jesus praying? With loud cries and tears. So, when Jesus would spend the night, mm. what was he praying for? His own protection. Mm. So, how much Jesus was depending on the Father to intervene in his situation against Satan. Uh, and how did he learn that? Look what he says in the next line. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. Mm. So how are we going to learn obedience? Through suffering. <laughs> That's what I said. When a person submits to whoever, mm. he obeys. Hmm. 
when Adam submitted to Satan his lies, mm. he obeyed Satan and rejected God. Mm. So you get submit to one. Either you submit to God or to Satan. Yeah. So if you submit, whoever you submit becomes your master. Mm. So in our life, do we get Gethsemane? Yes. Gethsemane is such a torturing place where your own friends whom you were thinking would be there to support you have gone to sleep. Mm. And you're all alone fighting the battle. Mm. And in that battle, Satan begins to beat you up and beat you up and beat you up in your mind. He's not going to touch you physically, mm. but he will torture you with so many ugly thoughts and ugly things that he'll show you mm. that you'll be tormented day and night. Mm. You lose your strength completely. You're, you're totally you're totally, you know, stressed out. Mm. The sap is running out. Mm. And that is his strategy. Mm. Torture a person. Mm. Therefore, once you give your room to his uh, thoughts, to his lies, mm. then he is at a very high speed gaining ground on people. Mm. So what is the remedy? What is the remedy? <laughs> Verse 8 is the remedy. Although Jesus was a son, mm. yet he learned obedience mm. to what he suffered. Mm. So the obedience is the kingdom of heaven works this way. Whatever you confess in your heart, mouth, Mm. and believe in your heart, mm. you are planting a seed for the future. Mm. So once you understand the system, now all the time you are using your mouth to speak mm. what you desire. You stop speaking what you don't desire. Mm. Yes. So when, when these friends were with him, all that Jesus is saying is you also pray with me yeah. so that when the temptation comes, you will not fall apart. Yeah. And because they were sleepy, when Jesus was arrested, they all ran for their life. Yeah. So then maybe Maybe that one hour of their prayer would have, uh, you know, made a difference. A lot of things. Yeah, would have changed. So now, now when you're studying the Bible study every day, isn't it making an impact in your thinking? Yes. No, I'm just thinking if they had prayed, what would they have prayed? That was my question. What what was the? I mean, a prayer was an expectation, but what? To whom? To God and what is that? They already taught them the Father, no? Mm. Yeah. The Father is a model of prayer. Yeah. Where first you are praising God, the first two lines, mm. and then comes at the end comes the petitions. Okay. Yeah, I got it. So, so the ninth verse is saying, having made what, having been made perfect. He became, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Hmm. So in our life, prayer should help me to obey me or prayer should pray qualifies me to get the blessing. To obey God. But most of the time we are more focused on obeying or how much of connection to, can I get from to God? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Can you see that? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. So, do people go through Gethsemane? Yes. Definitely. So, when when you have done something, now this is where Jesus has not done anything wrong. When you have done something wrong, okay, mm. your 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 calculation went wrong. Mm. You planned something. You had invested the money. 
Now the money is gone and you have to pay for so many people. Do you think that the devil will leave that person alone or will he make that person's life like a Gethsemane? He'll make it like Gethsemane. So when that is happening, is the way out? Yeah, so the way out is to speak, believe, speak the word. Yes, but it's a battle, right? Yeah. And only when a person is willing to do that, like Jesus. Uh, okay, let's go and see that mark where Jesus is saying, no, one minute. Mark 14. Let's go there and see. What do you think about this 34? 34. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even unto death. Even to death. Remain here and keep awake. So has he already told them what to do? Yeah. And then what did he do? He, going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. Now, what is the meaning of the word going a little further? Little further is uh, away from uh, them and being alone with the father. Yes. So did he fall on his face? Yeah. Now, just because he's praying, did, uh -huh. did that mean everything got settled down? No. But did he get the strength to go from the garden onwards? Yeah. Gol Golgatha. Yeah. Yes. So, when we face trials of any kind yeah. and you look at it with joy, yeah. then you're always falling further. Means yeah. you're falling forward. But in the midst of your trial and you're getting worried, you're falling backward. And the person who falls backward, that person is killed. Hmm. So, uh, I'm just asking uh, one point. That, uh, that transition or, uh, you know, you are you are leading a normal life suddenly you get uh, you know you get you get uh, cross okay now how do you see it with the with the eyes of god you know to see it with the joy so the only like, way you can do that as I told pray. you uh. like i told you in the team everybody does the deliverance ministry everybody does the healing ministry because what we have understood is one, today a call came to me mm. that this lady, this girl was manifesting. Mm. Okay. And this, another person has not ever done any deliverance ministry mm. in her life. Mm. And all that she did was she gave those two hymns and she said, just start listening. And she began to manifest. Mm. So she began to ask me, what should I do? Mm. But at the same time, she went on the video and checked out what did I teach on in, in the midst of all this? Mm. And she took the relevant prayer, the relevant scriptures and gave it to the mother and said, say it on the rosary beads. Mm. Okay. Mm. After two hours, just now when I was getting up, mm. okay, I saw the message saying that this girl has become sober. Mm. Now, now what happens is, why is that person get getting into manifestation? Because that person's mind has been captivated. Mm. I'll put it this way, brother. Mm. Uh, Bangalore airport is not that busy as like you see the Bombay airport. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Bombay airport, when you're standing there, you can see one flight. After that, another flight. You can see they are in queue. Yes. And down, the flights to take off is also in queue. Have you seen? Yes. But if that traffic controller makes a mistake mm. can there be a big major accident yes uh, so yes. without the traffic controller giving permission can the flight land no no in the same way your mind is the traffic controller mm. 
Mm. That is what Jesus is saying over here to those three. Mm. Keep on praying so that your focus will be on the Father. You will not get into pressure. Mm. Okay. Okay. Now, when the permission is given, the flight lands and then goes to the place where it is given the number which uh, which position it has to go where the passengers are getting down, new passengers are coming in. Right? Yeah. So when it is parked over there, the mm -hmm. passengers are, there is a transaction going on. Mm -hmm. Passengers are going out, passengers are coming in. Okay. In the same way, every thought mm -hmm. has got potential of life and death. Mm -hmm. Every thought. Every thought. Mm -hmm. Every thought has a potential of life or death. Mm -hmm. It can be godly, it can be ungodly. There's mm. nothing called as neutral. Mm. Either this side or that side, there's nothing in between. Mm. Now, those thoughts have power to take a person even to commit suicide. But it's a strategy. Mm. And that, in, in Kerala, when you go, uh, sometimes in the field, do you have you ever got caught by leeches? Yeah, yeah. You, you got it on your leg? Yeah, I have got it on my leg. Yeah. So did it bite you? Yes. It sucks uh, your blood. Yeah. When it is sucking, you don't know. You don't. After everything is over, then you realize, hey, that leech has sucked so much of my blood. Mm. Okay. Just the way the leech comes to suck the blood, mm. in the same way, the negative thought comes to suck your mind. Mm. Remember, your mind is spiritual. Mm. It's not a physical organ. Mm. So the more and more I'm entertaining the uh, negative thoughts, uh, it is just like me giving a traffic control to the enemy uh, and he has started blasting and one by one the thoughts are coming in uh, and you're not doing anything about it. Uh, After two or three days, you are already in depression. Why? Because those thoughts have become leeches and they're sucking the life out of your mind. Uh, so what is the way out? The way out is teaching the same person the word of God and very important, getting that person into an anointing session. For example, this 30 minutes uh, hymn, oh. okay? The person is bringing this person into the, the same atmosphere. Now there is healing, there's preaching and there's deliverance in one song. Oh. Okay? So what happens? The person is so attentive to listen that he has forgotten the other things because the mind has been captivated by these thoughts. Yeah. If he can repeat it for 30 days or 40 days, yeah. it becomes a habit for him. Yeah. By the time the husband calls back, everything in the house has changed. Yeah. So does, does can anybody get his mind leached? Absolutely, anytime. Yeah. So do we need to be alert that our mind doesn't get leached? Yes. And that's when a person is leeched. Yeah. The person might be very strong, but yeah. right before you, there will be tears flowing down. Yeah. Yeah. God. God. So most of the time under battle, we do we go a little further or we go a little backward? We go a little backward. <laughs> so when you're going backward, is the devil going to cash on and get the victory? Yes. That's how it works. Yes. Even if there is no evidence in your favor, because God said, I agree with what God, what God says and I keep pressing forward in that direction till I see it manifesting. Mm. What do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah, this is a very, uh, very, uh, you know, difficult stage when you are in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, that is a time when you are... Gethsemane is when you are alone. When you are alone, yes. That's the time Satan uses all his tricks, all his skill powers, everything to deceive you. Mm. Yeah. Is Gethsemane going to come in everybody's life? Definitely it will come. Uh, 
Yeah. Does he have his agents all over? Yes, he yeah. has got his agents all over. Sometimes your own family member can be an agent. Uh. Praise God. Yeah. But God allows that uh, Gethsemane, you know, without uh, God allowing it, uh, you cannot get now, it. Now, now, what did you learn about Jesus? How did he learn obedience? Yeah. Yeah. How, how, how does how does how did you learn how did Jesus learn obedience by the way he suffered in suffering what what do you do you submit to what God said and that's how you get into so you say you say you submit uh, it to God uh, okay, what is submit eh? what is that what is submit submit yeah, that's what I want to ask you. What do you mean by submit? Okay, have you heard submarine? What? Have you heard a word called submarine? Yeah, submarine, yes. What's a submarine? Submarine is a ship which goes under the water. Exactly. So what is submission? Submission, you go under, uh, you go under the word of God. <laughs> you got your own mission. Yeah. Everybody got their own mission. Uh. And the word of God has got God's mission for you. Okay. So when you say, Lord, I'm going to submit to you, uh. you can do your mission and make God's mission your mission. It's submission. I did not understand the mission part. Is it, are you talking about the word? Okay. God's word says, uh. rejoice in the Lord always. Yes. And might be you have got some tough time going on with some colleague. Hmm. Now, is it easy to rejoice? No, it is not. So now, submission is what? Whether I like it or not, whether it's painful or what, I will still do what you said I have to do. Hmm. So, so that, my... okay, so I'm asking, that will not be, uh, that will not be a wholeheartedly doing, you will not be wholeheartedly. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when it happens. Okay, uh -huh. okay, okay. You have got five children, right? Yeah. Okay. If the child is sick, mm. okay, let's say whole night. Mm. Are you awake or Sharu is awake? Sharu is awake or sometimes I'm also awake. Yeah. Be, be careful. After the meeting, you will get all what you said. Yeah. Be careful. Say yeah. pass. Yeah, pass. Why is it that she can be awake and you can't be awake? I have not thought about it, brother. <laughs> now, no, I'll, I'll see. I'll, I'll, I see the grand grandson is there now. Okay. I keep looking at the grandma doing so much for the grandson. Yeah. I keep wondering if out of that five person she had to do for me, it would have been so good. <laughs> yeah. Huh? But why is it happening? It's only because of love. Mm. So, to experience the love, when you go into the scriptures, you begin to realize. Now, for example, you read this Hebrews 5, 7 and 8. Mm. And if you keep thinking on it, how, what price Jesus has paid mm. to get me free. Mm. So, when you begin to understand the depth of his love, now, love starts flowing from you as well. Mm. And, and you know, brother, honestly speaking, somebody is trying to stop doing something. One. Mm. Second, another person is delighting in the word day and night. Mm. When he delights in the word, the desires of the world is dead and new desires have replaced it. Mm. Because your thoughts, mm. okay, words produce thoughts. Yeah. Thoughts produce feelings and emotions. Yeah. Emotions produce de uh, decisions. Yeah. Decisions produce actions. Yeah. Actions multiplied becomes habits. Yeah. When your habit keeps on going, it builds your character. Yes. Yeah. So where did it start from? Uh, 
so the the more and more you study the word you won't even know how much of your mind has already got changed without you putting self effort yeah. your effort is to get into the word and yeah. love the word yeah. and that word is jesus himself yeah. so 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 you are uh, saying that you know the it is the word that is working and that will be working in you when uh, you go through this phase of get so many if you are that, with the word. That, that is that is why the word will supply you the power and the strength uh, so that is why see another example is jesus is the wine you are the branch okay mm -hmm. the wine has to suck the sap and prov provide to the branch right mm -hmm. so when you are when you are meditating on the word day and night by default that word is loaded with the sap of heaven mm. the life of heaven and now you as a branch are getting continuous flow of that does that mean there's going to be no opposition there's going to be opposition there's going to be obstruction but once when a person understands that i meditate i read the word i meditate the word i speak the word i do the word in all this the sap of god's wine flows into the branch so uh, people say you know that you should uh, not run away from the uh, you know the, the sufferings okay you should embrace it you should uh, joyfully now you also said joyfully no but it, it depends on what suffering you are talking about mm. hey, I there, mean... are some, there are there are some mm. which is my inheritance to attack it mm. then i will not bear it i'll attack it mm. For example, all that know, Jesus. How do, you know? how do you know that's a different? Okay. okay, all that Jesus has finished on the cross. Hmm. Okay, that I don't have to bear it. That I have to attack it. Hmm. For example, sickness hmm. or sin. Hmm. Okay. Had Jesus paid the price for the sin? Yes. Now I'll I'll show you something. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now. Did the Romans crucify Jesus? Yes. And was Jesus crucifying somebody? What? 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 Jesus? <laughs> I'm just putting a googly for you, yeah. So that you become very att attentive. Yeah. Now, now, when the Romans were crucifying Jesus, was cru Jesus also crucifying something? Yeah, Jesus was crucifying our sins. How did you get that? Huh? Your answer is right. Your answer is right, but how did you get that? Oh, I, I, that is why he went on to the cross. Do you have the scripture to back up? I, I mean, that is the whole theme of the Bible, right? No, but do you have a scripture to back up? Uh, I don't have a scripture to back up, no. Okay, okay, okay. Read, 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 read. Now you said why, why obedience? When you read such things, no, these are love letter to mm. his beloved. Mm. Jesus is love letter to his beloved. When you read this, what happens to you? You start crying. Mm. When you, Amad, did your lover suffer for you to give you freedom? Read. Mm. When you were dead. When you were dead in trespasses, and the uncircum uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with Him. When he forgave or forgave us all our trespasses. So when when you came to Christ, okay, hmm. God, God grafted you in Christ and made you one with Christ. Hmm. So now you have got the life of Christ, hmm. and therefore he forgave you of all your trespasses. Hmm. Now look at the next one. Erasing. Erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set aside this nailing. It to the cross. How gradually you are reading here. You know, there is something called as an arrest warrant, you know. Mm. When the arrest warrant is there, can the cops arrest you? Yes. They can put you behind bars? Yes. So, so there was an arrest warrant for us. Mm. And that arrest warrant was put us in the prison where? Hell. Mm. So what did Jesus do? He erased that record that stood against us with its legal demands. Mm. He set it aside. How? By kneeling it to the cross. Mm. 
So when Satan was nailing Jesus, mm. Jesus was nailing all our sins, mm. our curses, our bondages, and all the negative things that we have been growing for years. Mm. That is what Jesus nailed on the cross to set us completely free. Mm. So did you think like there, there was some uh, transaction going on? Yeah. But how many people believe that Jesus also nailed on the cross? Mm. Okay, I'll give you why, why this is said like this. Under the Roman uh, uh, rule, mm. if a man has done some crime, he would be put in the prison. Mm. Say for 10 years or something. Mm. But outside the prison door, they would be having a document written mm. the name of this person, what was the crime, mm. and how much sentence he received. Mm. Okay, so only when the record, when the when the price has been paid, mm. the person is set free. So mm. now he is given ten years. Mm. So ten years he's been inside the prison. Mm. After ten years, the day he is released, mm. the first thing he will do is grab his hand on the document mm. and go to the rightful uh, authority, mm. present the document there. And say, I paid it in full. Mm. Praise God. Praise God. And then the seal is put. Mm. Once the seal is put, nobody can call you a criminal. Because mm. if somebody calls you a criminal, it is absolutely illegal. You can put him in behind bars. Mm. Okay. Now, what would happen last line? What would happen on the cross? On the cross the document would be put above the head of the person. Mm. And that's why the document was put, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Yeah. Okay, my time is up. Mm. You have five, five more minutes. You want to give me five more minutes? Yes. Okay. Look at the 15th verse. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. So what is the meaning of the word disarm? Disarmed means uh, he, uh, you know, the, uh, it, it became invalid. That, uh, that legal... legal... So all, the, all the arms and ammunition which was there with the enemy mm. has been all taken away. Mm. So this is—is is this not uh, after he uh, after he died on the cross? He went and uh, public spectacle. Is it a? Uh, is it on, a... on the cross? On the cross. Ah. On the cross. When Jesus was hung on the cross, Satan. Why Satan? Even the disciples thought they Jesus lost the match. Mm. Because if Jesus had to win, he should have overthrown the empire. Mm. But what they did not understand is. Jesus never came to establish an empire. He came to save the lost. Mm. Praise God. God. So this is the only battle in the whole eternity which is going to take place. Olympics comes after four years. All this comes after four years, three years, two years, this. But this particular battle on Good Friday is a battle for eternity. Mm. For everyone. So for everyone. So, when a person is in Gethsemane, mm. he is thinking about his issues, he has um, he has gone out of uh, you know, when he has uh, taken a decision to go against God's word, he is he's gone on the wrong side. Mm. But, when the person is obeying God's word, mm. he is armed with the truth. Mm. And this battle was once in a lifetime, just once. Mm. And that battle was won by Jesus. And therefore, through Jesus now, we have the authority to cast out demons and heal the sick. Mm. We have the authority to preach the gospel. We have the authority to face persecution. Mm. All this comes from the word. So yeah. if somebody says, Satan is attacking me, that's the biggest lie. Mm. The truth is, Jesus has disarmed him. Mm. 
Mm. He has not only disarmed Satan, but all his rulers and authorities. So when you say Satan is attacking, so then uh, who would, uh, who is the source of this uh, trials? See, Satan, you are not supposed to fight Satan. Who told you you are supposed to fight Satan? Jesus fought him and, and defeated Satan. Yeah. You have to only resist the lies of the devil. So, so when so a um, little you know uh, clarification. So now a uh, trial comes in. Who brings in the trial? Your own thoughts of fear. Hmm. So, so is, uh, when, when when the fear thoughts comes, hmm. okay, hmm. and you are not resisting the fear thoughts, hmm. will it come to pass? Yes, it will come to pass. Will those anxiety come to pass? Yes, it will come to pass. How can you say that? I can say that because you are created in the likeness and image of God. That's how God works. So this, he, uh, you know, he this... thinks and he speaks. He thinks and then he speaks. So if your thinking is wrong and you're speaking wrong, you have called disaster in the whole community. So it's your own creation. Yes. So it's a Satan has no role. Satan can give you lies. He has got a role, but he can give you lies. But you don't have to fight him because he's already defeated. Mm. Okay. So your battle is never outside, brother. Again and again and again, I'm saying your battle is never outside. Your battle is always inside. Okay. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is Good Friday. After that, we will learn on a topic living from inside. Mm. So then you'll come to know we are all the time trying to live from outside. Yeah. I think that's a good topic. Yeah. yeah. Something practical. Yeah. So why I brought you here is to make you understand that if somebody is saying you have got a bondage, satanic, this thing and that thing, here the Lord is clearly saying your documents are all cancelled. Mm. Second, the devil who had power to afflict you, God has disarmed him the rulers and authorities have been disarmed and now God has made a public example of them triumphing over them in it. Mm -hmm. so how many of us believe that Satan has actually no power over me? Mm -hmm. And how many of them have got fear that Satan will attack me? <laughs> okay. See, the light is switched on. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. In the same way, just as the light came, in the same way, a person is studying the word at a distance. Mm. Faith comes in. Mm. So, if, okay, uh, okay we will close it. We will probably take this question tomorrow. Yeah. Ephesians 6.12. My struggle is against the rulers. So, we will take it up tomorrow. Yes. Okay, Father, we thank you for this uh, beautiful evening. We praise you for this time that you have given to us. Lord, whatever we heard today, let it settle in our hearts. And we declare that this word may produce fruits. This word may lead us and guide us in every step that we take. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Friends, see you tomorrow, the same time, 3 p.m. we start the rosary and uh, we will uh, see you tomorrow. God bless.